Welcome back to Off Pitch 74. Presented, we've got a sponsor this time, JT. We're sponsored now. Presented by the City of San Jose Environmental Services. And I am here with the one and only JT Marcinkowski. How are you, bud? <laughs> Good. Thanks for having me on. I'm honored yeah. to be back. Yeah. I do. Last time I talked to you, what were we taught? We were talking about how we didn't know that you studied political science at Georgetown yep. and yep. how you're going to be president one day and <laughs> what else and just how you're this amazing person. Uh, so what's changed since then? Are you? <laughs> um, oh, man, the compliments are, are absurd. Um, no, I mean, life's good. It's hard to complain. Obviously, it's been a crazy year, but yeah, um, trying to make the best out of it and Hopefully the lights at the end of the tunnel a little bit. So, Ugh, I yeah, you're not lying there. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> um, so how? So okay, I don't want to get political here, but we no, voted. Let's do it. We Come voted. On. How do you feel about everything? Do, we won't say who you voted for or anything like that, but just you know. I think I'm. Um, I'm hopeful. Um, I'm hopeful for. For this year coming up, I think uh, obviously 2020 was not good on so many levels. Um, we're still dealing with a lot of uh, the pandemic and um, obviously social issues, but more than anything, I think optimistically, um, it brought a lot of things to the forefront that we haven't really talked about before. Um, we've had some really uncomfortable conversations and some had to face a lot of truths that we kind of tried to hide in the closet. Um, so I think more than anything, I think 20, 2020 was, was a year of change and a year that we'll look back on and be like, yeah, it sucked. Yeah, there was a lot of pretty bad, bad things that happened and things we'll have to deal with for, for years to come. But um, I think there was a lot of good that'll come out, come out of it as well. Now, it's so funny that we're talking about this. I'm actually editing a documentary of the entire year of oh, wow. quakes which has been insane, but I'm at that point right now where the Portland game got canceled and a couple of you guys gave statements, you know, about the state of the country and racial inequality. And I I was like, I think I'm just gonna put all of JT's like soundbite <laughs> in this because everything that you said was so good. And it's like two minutes of you just like, I was like, dude, this guy needs to be like, once he's done with soccer, he has to go be, you need to be like a speaker or something. Yeah. Because you're no, it's so funny. good. No, but my like public speaking is like the worst thing ever for me. I hate it. Um, I've gotten better, but I remember in school, in high school and even in college, like I would just start sweating. Like oh, my yeah. thing is I just sweat. And it was like my, like my friends were in the class and they would just be dying laughing in the back. And, but hopefully if, if I like what I'm talking about, or if I feel like I know what I'm talking about, then I don't mind, but yeah. if I have to present something that I don't know what I'm talking about. Ooh, doesn't end well. Speaking of high school, Paul. So I, um, I was like, Paul, what else should I talk to JT about today? And he was like, can you please ask him about going to De La Salle? Because Wanda went there as well. And I guess he's super curious about did you guys ever have like any connection there? Or is that just funny that now you two are professionals playing on the same professional <laughs> team? Like, I don't think I realized that you went to De La Salle. And, yeah. and yeah, so it actually goes deeper than that with, with Wando and I. So we, because oh. we, we played for the same club growing up as well. So we played for Mustang. Mm -hmm. And so when I was first started going to first team training, I was like 15 or 16 when I first, it was 2013, I guess. And, and I remember talking to Wanda. I was like so starstruck, but I, I knew that we went both went to De La Salle and I was, I was going to De La Salle at the time. And so I was up to him, like went up to him in the locker room after one of the trainings. I was like, yo, Wando, like I went to De La Salle too. And he, we like started like naming off like some teachers that we both have had. And I was like, this is like the coolest thing ever <laughs> that I'm like one that I'm in training. And then two that like Wando and I are talking about high school together. Um, the first time you met him, were you like, wow, he's, <laughs> he's such a goofball. He's like the coolest down to earth guy ever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause back then that locker room was full of like guys just like him with like Sam Cronin and Alan Gordon. And I'm not sure if Lenny was still there, but um, a few of those other guys that Jason Hernandez. And so 
it was it was a pretty cool locker room to to go into. That's awesome, dude. So okay, so shifting gears, you just got back from playing with the men's national team. And another weird thing about that is your roommate Jackson is there <laughs> too. So <laughs> it's like it, have you spent one day away from Jackson like this entire year? Barely. Like we are like attached to the hip almost. Um like thankfully we like each other and we, we yeah. enjoy our time together. Uh, but it, it helps that we're both both pretty chill and kind of um don't get bothered by pretty much anything. So no, we, we have a good time and um I'm super lucky that we're roommates and because obviously he's um a heck of a player, but he's a even better person off the field and uh he's a really good friend. I um I forget why, but a couple of us called you players during the the first lockdown mm -hmm. kind of like I don't know why we did this but we were interviewing you guys to like get to know you better and I had to call Jackson and he was telling me about how you and him were kind of doing like cooking competitions oh yeah we still do I was yeah. like who's the better cook and he like would not give an answer so <laughs> I'm asking you now who was the better cook I think it depends we each have like our specialties so like he's really good at grilling um he likes to grill a lot so uh whenever we do that he's kind of the the master there but uh we each have our own dishes that that we really like to cook he also said um piano he was taking up piano is there anything else that like a hobby that you <laughs> took up while you guys were locked down for those couple um, months um he taught me how to play chess so I, we played a lot of chess um I play chess now yeah so before quarantine like I had no idea. Like I yeah. didn't even, I didn't even know like how the pieces moved. Like I knew like what the, what the game was, but besides that, I knew nothing. And so started from zero and he's, he's really good. Um, he played when he was younger and still plays, but uh, so like he taught me how to play and then kind of, I felt so cool watching Queens Gambit because I knew <laughs> what they were like, I knew what she was talking about. Um, and then besides that, I think fortunately I was in, so during the summer, I'd still take classes um, at Georgetown. So nice. that took up a lot of my time, uh, especially during Orlando. So I wasn't just kind of sitting in the room doing nothing. I was I was in school still. So um, and then a lot of reading kind of on a whole bunch of different topics, just just to keep make sure I don't just stay on Netflix the entire day. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I just watched the Queen's Gambit too. And the whole time I was like, what? Oh, yeah. I, what? I was like, I want to learn how to play this just so I'm like, is there really this much strategy? It just looks like- Oh, it's just, incredible. Ugh. It's incredible. I, that's what, that and learning another language just seems like one of those things that I'll never, like I'll always want to do, but I'll just never, ever do it. That's a, what a negative attitude. I, I should not I have think... a negative attitude like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you if you start with chess, I think you'll have a better shot of learning chess than another language. Dude, I am the whole because I've like, been trying. So I've been learning trying to learn Spanish for so long, and I'm just <laughs> like, no, I don't understand this. Like the fact <laughs> that Tommy learned how to speak Spanish so fast just on an app is like mind blowing to me. Yeah, it's very I, impressive. Uh, so my my hobby that I did is I started making candles over the quarantine the okay. first lockdown and I literally they're they're taking up this entire house and now I don't know what to do with them <laughs> have you ever seen the office I you know I haven't watched that. so one of the characters one of Michael Scott's girlfriends one of them she was had her own candle business and she had an entire room full of just candles and that's how that's what I'm picturing right now it's just you have an entire closet just that full. sounds like me I like yeah. I even put up a, Sh a Shopify website and everything to try and sell them and I got I've gotten one sale <laughs> and it was from a friend of a friend I was like this doesn't even count it wasn't a random person or anything hey but, take it take it take it for what you can uh, so that's what I've been doing but and, okay so back to the men's uh national team tell me about that experience I'm always like curious how that works like is it I know you have Jackson to go there with but if you're all alone like isn't that kind of nerve-wracking having to go and be with these new guys and this new coach like tell me about that experience yeah it's funny even though so there was there definitely was a lot of new guys in camp I've played with pretty much all of them um because there's so many of them are young so like growing up in the new youth national teams and with like the 23s um 
most of them I've played with and been friends with for a long time. So even though it's a, it's a new environment, um, it's kind of, once you see those guys again, it's like, oh, it's like, we've never, we never had any time off, uh, which is like a really cool thing. And I think it's a testament to how like down to earth uh, everybody there is. And so there's, there's no real egos. Everybody gets along. Everybody's super cool. And um, same with the coaching staff. Like they're one of like the best coaching staffs I've been around. They're super detailed, meticulous, but they definitely harp on making sure that everybody's friends off the field. And it's very similar to kind of our environment with Matias. Uh, they both really preach unity and brotherhood. So it's, it's really cool. I love that. I love that. So I'm going to, I'm going to laugh at this next question, but Paul wanted me to ask you. He wants to hear about your brother working for the Patriots in the Brady area, <laughs> er, the Brady era. He wasn't there when uh, Crazy was there, right? Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Hernandez. Hernandez. No, no, no. no Good. No. Woo! That no. would have been interesting. Yeah, so my brother, but... so Johnny, he's so he's now at ASU. He's a trainer for Arizona State, but he was there at the Patriots when they beat. Uh, the Rams in the Super Bowl so he was only there a year but he was uh definitely had some stories about Tom Brady Gronk um, oh, no. <laughs> yeah so it's he was like whatever you think Gronk is is like exactly how he is is like the nicest person ever but he's also like insane um yeah. and then with with uh Tom Brady he was like yeah nobody touched him besides his own guys and had his own team around had everything and he was like, it was an unbelievable experience being there with, with Bill, Bill Belichick, but um, he was like, it's a pretty tight run ship. Like nobody's, nobody's better or bigger than anybody else. So he was like, it was really, really quite fascinating. And he was like, there's a reason why they've won so much. Dude, your parents must be like, oh yeah, one of my sons is a professional soccer player. The other ones work for the Patriots. Like, <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're pretty cool. My, my mom and dad are pretty, pretty cool. I would be bragging. Sure. Can't even deny it. Okay. So we are going to play a little game now. Okay. Uh, you've got 30 seconds and I'm going to ask you, we're going to, it's going to be 30 seconds. I'm going to ask you totally random questions okay. and you have to answer as fast as you can. And we're not going to get through all these questions, but we're going to try. JT, are you ready? Let's do it. I'm ready. Okay. And three, two, one. Uh, scale of one to 10, how good are you at keeping secrets? Nine. First celebrity crush? Mila Kunis. If you could travel back in time, what period would you go to? Last year. Do you snore? <laughs> no. Place you want to most travel in a Valley Girl voice? Thailand. <laughs> what song do you know every word to? Live like you're dying. What is that? Time's up. By Tim McGraw. What is that? Who? Tim McGraw, country. Oh, you're a country boy. <laughs> I do not listen to any country at all. I will no. Who do, who is um Chris Stapleton? I'll listen to Chris mm -hmm. Stapleton, but that's like it. He's great. I so do like a um, country concert. They're good. they're a good time. But all my music range will I can just anything. I am, I like hip hop. I like country. I like rock. I like EDM. I'm, I'm in for everything. Yeah, I think I am too. I'm more into metal though. Shay and I had a conversation about what music I was into and he was like horrified. Yeah, he was appalled or what? <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I just went to this corn concert. And he was like, what? I was like, okay, good he, talk, he buddy. Probably, yeah, he was probably judging you pretty hard knowing that. <laughs> Okay, we are going to take a quick commercial break and we will be right back. Quakes fans, do you have expired or unwanted medicine? Get rid of expired meds the right way to protect the bay. Visit sjenvironment.org slash medicine for drop-off bin locations to dispose of your unused and expired medicine safely. Medicine flushed down the toilet or dumped down the drain ends up in the San Francisco Bay, harming the environment and wildlife. That's sjenvironment.org slash medicine. Brought to you by the City of San Jose Environmental Services Department. All right, we are back here at Off Pitch 74. And so now we're going to get into the nitty gritty, JT. 
let's talk about COVID and this entire year. Like what, what, what was going through your mind? Like, what were you doing during lockdown? And then you hear that we're doing this tournament in Orlando. Like when you heard that news, what, what, just what was going through your mind? <laughs> so I'm actually one of the player reps for the uh, Players Association. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of my quarantine was spent on conference calls, on Zoom calls uh, with our team, with the PA, with the MLS. So you had a hint that they wanted to do this probably way before oh, yeah. you knew it. When did you like even hear about this the first time? Man, they, they talked about it, like having a tournament pretty early on. Um, and so there was always like a discussion about it, but we just had no idea how they're going to pull it off. Um, it was just like, there were so many moving pieces. How are we all supposed to go to Orlando? How are we going to get all tested? How are we going to have a hotel, all these fields? It was like chaos. Like yeah. it was just... It, they were just kind of throwing things and hoping something would stick. And then to their credit, um, I mean, the MLS did a fantastic job of one, pulling it off and then two, making sure everybody was safe. Um, the tournament ran super smoothly. Obviously it sucked for Dallas and Nashville coming in with a few cases, but besides that, nobody tested positive there, um, which was remarkable. And yeah, to their, all the credit goes to them. I think, um, they set up everything really well. And the players kind of, we were pretty pessimistic going into it. We were like, we're going to be stuck in a hotel for 40, 50, 60 days. Like that yeah. sounds horrible. Yeah. But then like when we're now looking back and it was like, oh, that was so much fun. Um, it was so fun being around the team all the time. Um, I think our team definitely has the most fun out of anybody else. So that helps. And it, it was great. Uh, it was, it's definitely going to be something I look back on and be, be really fond of yeah we definitely we were not jealous that marco and sam had to go down with you guys yeah. we were like no you guys go have fun we'll be back here <laughs> just send footage to us like go have a great time and they those two oh my god they they had their work cut out for them yeah they worked no a way. lot oh they, my god i felt pretty bad for them because they were not only were they shooting all the videos taking all these pictures they were playing games like every day. So were they, they were really? Like, yeah, playing against the coaches. So they would play like 5v5 or 6v6. And mm. so it was, it was the, like Marco, Sam, Sean, Andy, Hector, uh, Ricky, and then against the coaching staff. So, and they were like heated battles. So they, it, it was pretty hilarious. I didn't hilarious. hear about so, any of those. Oh yeah. So we That's would be hilarious. walking. Yeah, we were walking out to training and whatever it was. And then they would be like on the side of the pitch, like, have like two small goals and they were just going after it so by the time <laughs> we were walking up they were like done just drenched in sweat like could barely move oh my so God. yeah dude those guys and it's it's very nice that every single one of them has their own great personality so it's not like any of them are duds to be around like literally every single one of those guys is a blast to be around yeah. it's yeah yeah i love our team um, so another question that I wanted to know is working under Roa and the language barrier and how insane he is, but how awesome he is. Like, tell me about that situation. Like, how do you guys communicate? Is it tough? Is it like, have you learned a lot from him? Like, tell me about, tell me all about that. Yeah. So when we first started back in January of 2019, I really had no idea what to expect. I knew, um, let you we, like that's his nickname he was one of the best goalkeepers in Europe when he played and then I kind of heard bits and pieces of his other story that kind of he stopped playing for a certain period of time then he went back to playing and then he got sick and then it was just on and on and on and on um, but I had no idea like it was I all I knew he didn't know English and I know some Spanish yeah and luckily with um, Danny Vega like he's been from the minute he got signed to to now, he's been he's been great. So he, in the beginning, definitely did a lot of the translating because um, we were just kind of feeling each other out, and we didn't exactly know how each other worked and um, the intri intricacies of kind of the coach player relationship. But by now, um, me and him are are really close. So me and Lachu are, he's an unreal coach. I've learned 
a whole bunch from him. Um, but not only that, but he's just a really, really good person. Um, I think one of the coolest parts about quarantine was we would have weekly Zoom calls. So myself, Indio, Matt, and Lechu, we were on the call for hour, hour and a half, um, kind of once a week and had nothing to do with soccer. We just talked about each other's lives, um, kind of where we grew up, where we see ourselves, where would, what do we want to do in the future? And that was like awesome just to know um, those three guys on a, on a much deeper level. And it sounds crazy, but like the language isn't even a factor. Um, it's, we've learned to communicate with each other. I've learned um, a lot, a lot of Spanish. And so that helps. And he gets it. He speaks pretty slowly and uses easy words so I can understand. But um, yeah, it's, it's a really cool relationship. I love it. Even just walking past him and his presence, you're like, holy crap. He's like, <laughs> he just looks intense all the time. Yeah, and it's funny because like, that's how that's what I thought too. I'm like, oh my God, like this guy's huge. He's scary looking. Like when I first met him, when they first came. And then I realized like, he's the biggest teddy bear. Like all he wants to do is joke around. Like he's always playing jokes. It's, it's so funny. Um, yeah, he's awesome. That's how it goes with the big guys. It's so funny. And then yeah. all of us short people have the little person syndrome and we're just yeah. crazy. So <laughs> there's just no winning. Um, so, okay. Speaking about being a goalie. Um, so you became our starter. And I want to talk about this in a, in a respectful way, but was, was you coming on to be our starter, like kind of awkward at first, you know, you know what I'm trying to no. say? Like, it, yeah. were you ever like, oh man, like, I'm so excited that I'm starting, but like, is Vega gonna like have, have it in for me that I'm starting now? You know what, it, you know? Yeah. yeah, no, not at all. Um, he is, he's been the same person from when I first met him until now he's he's never changed he's always been um a great teammate a really good friend and always had my back and I think it's that's that's not normal you know it's a lot of times if someone comes in and plays and you're just there's always like a little bit of awkwardness like you're talking about but um honestly no like there wasn't any and all the credit goes to him because um, I think he just always wants to support people it doesn't matter um, and I think that goes for all three of us. Like if, if Matt played, we would feel the same way. And when India was playing, we, Matt and I felt the same way. We, we really want each other to do well. And um, obviously as a goalie, only one person plays. But I think it, there's a difference between um, when, I, like when, I, when I'm training, obviously I want to be the one playing, but I don't want him to do bad. So that way I play, you know, because then it's like, okay, that's not really – it's not like a fair shot. Like you want him to do really well. Cause that means you have to do even better in order to play. Um, and that's kind of like the mentality that all three of us have. And it just makes trainings really fun and really, really competitive, but in a really good way. I love that. That's a great answer. Even if that's not the truth, that's a great answer, no, it's the truth. <laughs> but yeah, I know it's I'm the sure truth. truth. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I also want to talk about that time during the season too, because I believe that when you guys went down at LAFC, what was the record? Zero five and three, zero six and three. I can't. When we came back, yeah, I don't. Yeah, think, I don't think we won. Um, yeah, like tell me about that time. Like, what was going on behind the scenes where you guys just all of a sudden just switched? It was like crazy to watch from the outside, honestly. Like, tell me about that. Like, what was going on? Like, what did it? I, I mean, I think there was so much. I think when we lost, so we lost 5-0 to Colorado away um, in a really, really pretty bad game. We just weren't ourselves. You know, we weren't playing the way that we all know knew we should be. Um, and it wasn't like there was one person. It wasn't like there was one particular moment. It was just everyone. It was the people who were on the field. It was the people on the bench. It was, um, so I think we just had to get back to who we were and how to find that love uh, for the game and for each other again. And so we had a really, really, really good meeting uh, after that and kind of just said what everybody felt and uh, everybody kind of took it in stride and took it to heart and we changed a few things, but it wasn't like there was a drastic change. It wasn't like, you know, we brought in 11 new guys and that was the reason. It was just like, we just got back to who we were. We we started playing better. We kind of got our confidence back. It's, it's a funny, there was one training that in particular that, that 
I think we'll all remember is we were doing a really simple drill. And all Matias said was, just keep the ball. Don't do anything else, <clears throat> but just keep the ball. And from that moment on, we, had, we probably had 50, 60 passes in a row. We were playing like a little possession drill. And everybody was like, yeah, we can do this. Like, we did, w- there's, there's no reason why we can't. And so I think from that moment, we kind of got our confidence back. And that was the kind of the turning point of, all right, we can, if we win at one or two games, all right, we can see ourselves back in the playoffs. We're not, we're, we're, too, we're way too good of a team to be bottom of the table. And so from that LAFC game, then the Galaxy game, and then the Vancouver game. And so it was kind of a snowball effect was, was pretty special to be part of. Was that, was that exciting to start a playoff game? We won't talk about the result yeah. or anything, but I. No, it's I, okay. Yeah. It's uh, it was, it was, it was surreal. Um, being a fan of, of the team growing up and um, actually being, so I was a ball boy in 2012. Were you really? <laughs> yeah. So when we play, so when the Quakes played Galaxy in the playoffs, I think it was the second leg of the Western Conference semifinal, I think. Um, I can't totally remember, but yeah, I was a ball boy for that game. So being at that, at that game, um, and then playing in this one, it was, it was pretty surreal. Yeah. That's great. Just when that, when that, when Wando got that goal, I'm just, I was like, dude, I can't, I can't watch this game anymore. <laughs> this is yeah, it was a drama for a game. <laughs> yeah, it, it was, it was insane to be a part of. And I can only imagine like watching it because when you're on the field, you know, it's, it's really intense, but it's not like you're thinking anything like the whole big picture. Whereas when you're watching the game, it's like, oh my God, this is insane. It was insane. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway. Okay, JT. That's all that's all the questions I have, but I've got one last one. Okay. You tell me about your favorite memory from this season. Hmm. There's a lot. Um, I think Jackson scoring that goal at LAFC and kind of the the relief that everybody felt when we walked back in the locker room was really special. Um, everybody kind of just felt like that monkey came off our back. Yeah. And then, funny enough, beating LAFC at home to clinch the playoff spot, that was when – it's funny how it was like full circle when Jackson got the red card – um uh, and kind of playing 30 minutes down a man against the team that has always kind of been the our like arch nemesis or whatever yeah and beating them in a way that we did and playing really well and clinching the playoff spot from where we were a month and a half prior well that was that was really cool um and seeing the fans and going over the fans when they were honking it was like i remember turning around and I rarely like get emotional on the field, but I was like, just kind of like let it all out. You know, I was like, this is, this is something that is really special. And then really want to, don't want to take it for granted because it doesn't, it doesn't happen too often. So I'd say those two moments of it going, being full circle and starting away at LAFC, beating them last minute and then clinching a playoff spot against them at home. Those, those two moments were really cool. Yeah. Those were great moments. Great answer. I, be, I will say, I think Jackson should have continued taking off the jersey. <laughs> just go, just go for it, man. Like, <laughs> I know it, it was, uh, the problem is we wear those sports bras. So it yeah. doesn't look as cool, you know? I know. I know. I would be self-conscious about that too. <laughs> <sighs> well, JT, this was short and sweet, but thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having um, me on. And we will catch you guys next time on Off Pitch 74, presented by the City of San Jose Environmental Services. Thanks, JT. Thank you.